Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another episode of Building It Up with Bertelsmann, India's first growth-focused podcast. I'm your host, Ankur Variku, and with me today is the co-founder and CEO of India's largest sports gaming platform, Dream11, Harsh Jain. Very few of you would know that Dream11 actually started in 2008. It's an 11-year-old startup. And we will discuss a lot about the journey, but particularly, what does it take to build a community of such active fans across the world, and how do you monetize them? It's a journey you don't want to miss out on. Thank you so much, Harsh, for being part of this podcast. It's a pleasure to have you. Pleasure to have you. You, uh, figuratively speaking, have had like a dream run with Dream 11, but not too many people know you started in 2008. That's right. So it's almost like an 11-year-old startup. Yep. And very few would recognize the effort, the intensity, and the perseverance which you would have taken for you to get to this point. Sure. I want to take you back to that, sure. which is you ran a social media agency before this. Yeah. And, and you have been... Before this, uh, Avtar of Dream 11. B- before this, Avtar yeah. of Dream 11. And, and you have been, in your admission, an active sports person and yeah. a gamer as well. Absolutely. So was Dream 11 like... Zindagi mein karna hi hai. This is like an obvious choice or what? So I'll tell you how we started. And um, so in 2001, I went, I'm a Bombay boy, born and brought up. In 2001, I went to London uh, for seven, to Seven Oaks for my high school. Okay. And so that's when my passion for football got me introduced to fantasy football. Yeah. And I fell in love with it. I loved it. It was amazing, right? So I said, why, is, why does nobody know about this in India? Correct. Okay. And at the same time, Super Selector also kind of launched in India 2001 yeah. and people started understanding fantasy sports. Unfortunately, Super Selector was right product, wrong time. Mm. So it exploded and then imploded, yeah. right? It just fizzled out. But what happened was I fell in love with fantasy football and kept in touch with all my friends in Bombay through that. Okay. So 2003, I went to UPenn to do engineering. Mm-hmm. And those six years abroad that I was... Um, you know, out there, not being in touch with my friends, fantasy football was the one thing that kept us in touch every day. Wow. Um, 2007, I moved back to India. India. And um, I joined the family business and I did my engineering, but my family business was real estate and finance. So not too exciting for a 21, 22 year old engineer and um, had that entrepreneurial itch always, but you know, didn't know, didn't have an idea. And then came along IPL. Yeah. So went looking for fantasy cricket for IPL. Normally, just like, you know, obviously we've been playing fantasy football for six, seven years. What's the Hoga? Hoga. Yeah. Super selector tha and, yeah. you know, nothing's there. Nothing's there. Looked online, some rubbish fantasy games by Yahoo, which is a worldwide game. Nothing for IPL, nothing there, right? So you're like, this is crazy. If you've been in the States or in Europe anywhere, 70% of online sports fans play fantasy sports. You're not a real sports fan unless you've dabbled with a league or a draft or something. Hmm. And in India, it's not there. And we have a billion sports fans, yeah. right? So crazy it's crazy. About it. yeah. yeah. And so this was literally like no market research, no heavy, just like these things kind of make sense. It's a personal passion. We should have this in our country. So I'm going to launch it. I asked my friends who were playing fantasy football with me. One guy was crazy enough to join me. And he's my co-founder. Um, and uh, we started out. Wow. And um, everyone told us it's the worst idea ever. <laughs> and they were right. Okay, they were right. It was the worst idea. 2008, we launched, copying the US and Europe models. Sure. Season long, free to play, ad driven monetization. Yeah. Worst idea ever, <laughs> right? <laughs> Except that also just because that wasn't bad enough, uh, we said that, you know, what else can we add to make it worse? <laughs> so we said that as an entrepreneur, you're excited, right? So we said, you know, we're doing fantasy sports, but fantasy sports is played with friends. Sure. So we'll put um, adding friends also Got because, it. you know, Facebook and all was just starting out at that yeah. time in India as well. Okay. So we'll add friends. You can add your friends and you'll have a feed hmm. what they're doing. But what will they do? So we said, okay, we'll add polls and trivia and live scores and news and blogs and gaming so we had casual gaming as well because you have to do something to put the feed true and what we ended up with was a sports social network with fantasy sports in one center part but that's it that's it three years later nothing was really working because everything was on but nothing was there's no focus right as a startup you need to solve one problem 
nail it, yeah. scale it, and then everything else you can kind of build around it. So true. And so three years later, in 2012, we actually broke down everything and went back to fantasy sports alone wow. and fantasy cricket. And um, we also took that fantasy cricket, changed the business model from a free to play season long business model to a per match freemium model. And that started working. But that through that journey of like, you know, making those mistakes, we also ran out of money. So we built a social media agency on the side that created cash flows for us to put into the product dream, Fantastic. if you excuse the pun. And um, when Dream 11 started, the new Avatar in 2012 was launched, that found product market fit in a year. Wow. And then we sold the digital agency and pumped all that money back into the product and continued till 2015 when we raised our first round of funding. Round of fund. Was there anything that you knew that was happening there which told you that PMF RI? Was there something that the consumers were telling you? Were there transactions or when? metrics which were changing when you moved from the completely free to play model season yeah. to a freemium model? Yeah, we started making money. And, and that was, that <laughs> was that. I mean, like we started actually <laughs> making some revenue, yeah. um, which was new to us on the product front because we'd been running free to play ad sponsorships. Yes. So we'd never seen users paying for anything. Through 2008 and 12, we didn't just sit there with the same model. Sure. We kept pivoting, 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 pivoting. pivoting, pivoting, pivoting. 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 And 2012, we saw that this pivot actually works. Wow. And um, we saw users paying for it and coming back and paying again. Paying again. Yeah. And that's basically what product market fit is, right? True. Absolutely. Users that show value by re returning to a product without promotions, without discounting, that's, without any of that. That's the mecca. And telling their friends about it. And yeah. you see organic traffic going up. You see friend referrals going up. Without a marketing budget, you see like... 10, 20, 30 percent growth month over month. That's product market fit. That's product market fit. If my story is right, you did also not choose to go through the Play Store and the App Store route, but go through a direct download. Route. Right, that's not by choice. Uh, which was largely because they didn't allow that. That's right. So, so you know, weird twist of fate. Yeah. You know, Play Store is supposed to be the kind of like open platform, yeah. like put whatever you want. And App Store by Apple is always supposed to be like a little tight and, yeah. you know, closed and I'm going to approve everything. Yeah. Apple said whatever is legal in India is legal for us. Okay, great. So we are on the App Store, <laughs> but we're not on the Play, Play Store, Store because Play Store said they have a policy, which is that any gaming for any cash is not just allowed. not allowed. Legal or illegal, doesn't matter. Wow. So yeah, we had to load a, our 95% of India is on the Play Store. Exactly. And we had to load a side loader APK to get wow. people to install. And if the, you know, when you go to install the app, it says, hey, this app might blow up might your phone, yeah, yeah, might exactly. kill you. Yeah, yeah. Are you sure <laughs> yeah, you want to install yeah. it? And you're saying, yes. Exactly. And that's actually a great testament of product value. I was about to say that. Right. If you pass that Google, like, <laughs> do not download this Google app and we're not sure and yeah. you still download it and you still keep it then it shows you really adding value to users. If your product adds value and with network effects, which is very important, someone somewhere will say, you know what, whatever, I'll just try it out. They'll see value. They'll tell their friends about it. And the friend who said no to installing it will then say that, okay, now let me install it anyways. Which makes sense. Yeah. Let me let me stress now on the network effect because I yeah. think that is something you've done impeccably well, sure. better than most people. There is... Like an additional friend, an additional member joining this fantasy league makes the league better. Yes. That's by definition how yes. it is. And you had this viral effect coming in and so yeah. on. But you also had, and this is at least sitting objectively in India, yeah. the big task of parking money and then playing with that real money. Yeah. Even if it's with friends and so on, yeah. it's not a trivial task in this country. No, no, no. By People don't far. trust you. There's no trust. Exactly, right? You, like, you, you, yeah, yeah, for sure. Right? So... One is building the community, which yeah. is just like, hey, download kar liya, team yeah, banali, yeah, yeah. but then the actual test, which right. is uploading the money and parking yes. it, yes. what were the challenges you faced and how did you overcome that? So again, um, this happens over time. Yeah. You literally like, there's no silver bullet, <laughs> right? There's no like magic answer for that. You literally have to show with time that yes, your money is safe with us whenever you want to withdraw it. So in a... In a slightly, 
U-turn fashion. Mm-hmm. The easier you make for users to withdraw their money, the more comfortable they are keeping the money with keeping you. Keeping the money, yes. Right? Yes. And that makes sense when I say it, yeah. but it doesn't make sense generally. True. So some companies try to make it tough for people to do certain actions, yeah. like withdrawing money. Correct. We try to make it easier. Yeah. Because we said, look, if you have the faith that you can withdraw your money at any second, any point of time, and you'll get a message straight away saying it's in your bank account. Correct. You'll try it once and then you'll trust us. Yeah. So I think the answer to your question is basically, you don't have to build um, systems or processes or products. You have to actually build trust. Trust. So true. And trust doesn't have to come only via product. It comes via the way you work, what you say, your positioning, your brand, yeah. your marketing, yeah. your ads. Do they say like, come with money and uh, just, you know, yeah. Like become come, rich just become rich yeah. and come win like a crore yeah. and you can put one rupee and win one crore yeah. is your ad false or is your ad true, true. when the user clicks on that ad yeah. will they see what you promised yeah. there yeah. are there other people who are winning money yeah. who are going on social media and talking about it that I won money yeah. right the, the people do that right. so you have to build trust and of course it was important for us when we signed Dhoni when we signed Harsha Bogle right. so first brand ambassador was Harsha yeah. then was MS then we signed like 18, 20 more brand ambassadors. Correct. We did, we are the official uh, fantasy game of the ICC, the IPL, the BCCI, PKL, ISL, wow. FIH, all of them, right? Wow. So the NBA, so that all builds trust. It does. it does. And that allows people to say that, you know what, yellow like you know I can trust you with my money and it also shows and I'll come back to that in, in your choice of brand ambassador at least early yeah. on because when you see a Harsha Bhogle you see a MS Dhoni the first thing that gets trust. generated is the emotion of trust yes, exactly like, right? yeah, as exactly. against maybe someone hey, a lot of our audiences have come and said no uh, Dhoni ne bola hai toh hi hoga. <laughs> right? and, it, and it's true but that's what brand ambassadors do right yeah. um, they pass on their credibility to, via the, the brands brand. they endorse, which is why they're also very careful about the brands. Exactly. Like the minute you have Amitabh Bachchan selling a brand, it's immediately trusted more by people true. because he passes on his credibility to that. So true, so true. Early on, did you, did you know what metrics to track in order to ensure that this community is actually self-fulfilling or was it more about so we did a lot of reading on like growth hacking and there are these viral metrics and k factor and you know basically there are some things you can use to say that is your community so you know if you take your new users divided by your old users or repeat users is that ratio greater than one and so then there's a viral factor and then we keep we kept track of those but um, not too much sure. right I mean those are good hygiene metrics yeah. but we just focused every day on like improving them we focused every day on we never had referral programs for the first like 2012 to 2000 let's say 15 or 16 I think we didn't have a referral program and then I, I think after 2016 or 17 we started our referral program and that led to a huge surge I can imagine. because now friends were actually getting something to tell their friends yes. about it and we found that worked really well. So then 50% of our new users were coming purely through referrals. Wow. wow. Which is great. Which is awesome. Because it's not just that it's a cheaper form of acquisition for sure. the business, yeah. but your friend is telling you to play. Exactly, right? There's so trust. your conversions are better, your trust is better. You yeah. come in trusting the business. Yeah. And over time, if I were to focus on today as the CEO of this business, which is one metric that you would frantically still track and care about? Payback period. Which is, which is CAC LTV or CAC? No, so CAC LTV, but LTV is very, huh. it's a slippery slope, right? Yeah. I can say the LTV of a business is like in five years or seven <laughs> years or the which payback period for us, yeah. yeah, is your contribution margin revenue. Okay. Which is your revenue after all your operating costs and Perfect. right. Perfect. So the, the the stuff which actually scales. Yeah. Your contribution margin revenue divided by the customer acquisition cost. Should be. And can you get a payback period within twelve months? Got it. Okay. Right. So that is the one metric we track that it, within a year of acquiring a user, mm-hmm. uh, do we make our money back on that user? Got it. If we do, then I can invest upfront. Sure. 
because I know that I'll make that money up after a year yeah. and keep investing and keep having that lag effect. Got it. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And as is evident in this country and it happens just because you started doing well and you got pictured and you got covered, Hajar Lok started yeah. doing the same thing. Yeah, right? and, and then it but becomes not just in this country, everywhere. Yeah, everywhere, everywhere else. Everywhere, but, but, yeah. but I don't know why I feel more so here. But just it's because just we that, have a lot more people. Perhaps, yes. <laughs> yeah. like everyone seems to be talking, yeah. talking about it. And then it becomes very almost commoditized, right? Because yeah. people like, no, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'll just go yeah. there. Yeah. Um, and a lot of entrepreneurs that I speak to would always say, in these cases, it's the product and the engagement that finally wins. Yes. Uh, have you also felt the same way? So I think in our case, more than others, mm-hmm. because ours is not a commodity. If I have to buy this cup, let's say, right? Um, if I get it for 150 rupees on Flipkart and 100 rupees on Amazon, I'll just buy it on Amazon. I don't care. True. I'm buying a cup, True. right? I might have, if it's like 145 and 150, I might buy it from the one which I like more, sure. right? Um, but for the most part of India, actually, even a 145 and 150, they'll buy the 145, True. right? In our business, where you have network effects, where you're playing with friends, where you've set up your leagues, where you are actually playing a certain point system, a certain gameplay, it's history. you would have to completely change your behavior if you would move on to another platform. That's so true. And so that's the same reason Google Plus lost to Facebook yeah. is because your network was already built. It's the same reason Hike or WeChat are not able to catch up to WhatsApp. True. It's because my network is already there. If I have to move to those, I have to move my entire network with me. True. And so I wouldn't say it's just about product engagement or usability because those things can be copied. It's about the network effects that are built in a business, which make it very hard for you to move without your network. Yeah. And and you guys just feel it so much more than any other business because yeah. it's not transactional and one-off. That's right. It's like it's, literally daily activity. Yeah, which is why our retention rates are also great is because literally once you've played fantasy sports, you <laughs> cannot watch sports without playing fantasy sports <laughs> because your whole reason of watching sports now pivots to being a little selfish sure. to not just supporting a team yeah. but wanting certain players in those teams to play well because That's you will beat your friends Correct. right and so um, you'll see the average lifetime I think in the US they have done some studies the average person plays fantasy sports for nine years Wow! right <sighs> on the same platform sure. because once you create your league and you have your friends you don't move you don't move wow I've heard the word focus from you several yeah, times now and yeah. it seems like that's your operating system. In yes, I, I, I really believe focus is underrated, right? It is. People it's just want to do everything. Like, let's yeah. go international. <laughs> let's launch. You know, the amount of times people have come to me and said, why don't you do casual games? Why don't you launch poker. Uh, Rummy, poker, <laughs> this, that, like... And the whole, you know, people have come and said, why don't you start a sports celebrity management because you have so many brand ambassadors, why don't you just manage them also? I said, okay, we'll do everything. And no one can't do anything, right? Like, Harsh for PM. <laughs> but like, the whole idea is that, look, we do what we do really well. Let other people do what they do really well. And build what is core to your business, buy what is non-core. That's kind of our operating system again, uh, you know, our operating system has lots of parts, but yeah. yeah. No, awesome. And, and, I, and I saw the wall, which is around the culture. Yeah. And, and the first one, there was data. Yes. Like 99% yes. data, 1% gut. Yeah. Uh, is that how, like when you're building a team yeah. and that too from scratch in a, in a city that people think does not have enough talent, yep. so you know, it's harder Tech to build talent, that. Yeah. Um, how has that journey been? Yeah, it's very important because it demo- democratizes and moves away from that hippo culture, which yeah. is the highest paid person's opinion, right? right. Um, I love the quote that um, in God we trust, yeah. everyone else must bring data, <laughs> bring data. right? So just if you open up decision making to say that data will point the way, sure. but you also have to have that 1% gut because otherwise there would be no iPhone, for example, because right. if you did market research, like, um, you know, keyboard. even Ford said that, you know, if you did market research, people would have asked for more horses, <laughs> not a car, right? And so you need that 1% guard, but 99% has to be data driven. And so we have a very strict culture that we follow, mm-hmm. which is do put our culture first. Data, 
ownership, performance, users, and transparency. Nice. So we hire based on these five principles. Nice. We retain talent. We give appraisals and increments based on them, and we fire based on them. Nice. So I think the one thing I've learned over the last 11, 12 years is that the only thing that truly scales is culture. Yeah. If you get culture right, everything else kind of just works around it. Sitting today, 2019, 20. um as the co-founder ceo what's the one thing that keeps you up at night um i think the one thing that keeps us up i think that keeps almost india ink up at night is regulatory and policy <laughs> right um i think every business worries about regulatory policy certainty about having it in black and white yeah. in policy that yeah. this is allowed and this is not allowed yeah. so that we can just build our businesses on what's allowed I think that regulatory uncertainty will continue but taking the flip side it's also a positive for all the entrepreneurs in India mm. is because foreigners can't deal with that regulatory uncertainty <laughs> the way Indians can for us it's a way of life yeah, it's like we're right? so used to it yeah, yeah we're used to it but foreigners They can't deal with it shit. and that's the opportunity which is why dreamland has been able to scale up before any of the incumbents could jump onto doing this we scaled up massively because their legal teams or some person wouldn't allow them saying that it's not 100% clear true and that's the opportunity got it i'm sure it had some impact but i'd love you to walk us through how geo changed the equation for you oh, yeah, if at sure, all sure. Uh, was it did you i'm sure you found a very different type of audience coming in from yep. tier 2 to tier 3 cities yep. were they very different in terms of their understanding of the product their propensity sure. to use it their propensity to spend and how did you deal with that so geo for us is not been a we've not been a primary beneficiary okay. of the geo effect we've been a secondary one mm-hmm. because what happened with geo is that enabled a lot of people to use more internet yeah. or to get internet for the first time on the mobiles got it and so the companies like hotstar hmm. uh facebook google amazon flipkart ola they already had a huge audience mm-hmm. penetration and they use that which helped them to reach out to a whole new tg and audience got it we're still a fraction of your hotstar audience yeah so hotstar is getting that new audience sure. we're still actually trying to just get the old hotstar audience to start playing got it so i would say that where a secondary beneficiary mm-hmm. where what geo's done 2 years back will help us today today what geo's doing today will help us in 2 years, years from now so Makes we're not directly linked that way fair enough and uh, did anything change for you when upi came in yeah i mean it's look payments when payments become easier to make yeah. it just benefits everyone doing payments yeah. so again it's not changed our lives really because we're still at a small enough sports consumer base mm-hmm. where with upi without upi they would still pay if they wanted to pay got it but upi is just creating a much larger tg for us in the future sure. making payments more seamless easier and uh, better for everyone got it awesome cool. great man awesome and with that we come to the end of yet another episode on building it up with bulldozman india's first growth focused podcast i am your host ankur variku signing off and until the next episode do not forget to subscribe on itunes savan spotify soundcloud and also check the video out on youtube and facebook until the next episode i'll see you all